Today we're going to be answering the age-old question, what's better for cooling your graphics card? Passive cooling or active cooling? Oh, hi everybody, Tech the Weeb here, and uh, yeah, I thought it would be a fun little test here to do a little experiment to see if we could find out if passive cooling, which is where you don't have any airflow, you just have a heat sink, is the same performance as active cooling. And active cool cooling, you have a fan on top. And there's still a heat sink under there, obviously. See there, you can see the heat sink but the fan blows the air through. On this car, the only airflow would be the air that's flowing through your case. So these are both Asus cards. They're both the GT 1030, and they have basically the same specs. So I thought this would be a good way to test which one performs better, if there is a difference at all. And maybe we could even try overclocking them to see if that makes a difference with the passive versus the active. Maybe this one will get a better overclock. Or maybe there's no difference at all. And we're just wasting our money on all these cards with fans. You know, we could just leave the fan off. And then I thought, yeah, this would be fun. If this one doesn't do as good as this one, maybe it could if we put a fan on it. So I got a little fan here. Maybe we'll strap it to the card like that. And we'll see if we could make this card perform as good as this card. Or maybe it won't make any difference at all. And it's just a waste of time with all these fans all the time. Anyway, let's go ahead and put these on the computer. And we'll do some initial tests just on their default configuration. So there we go. We got the actively cooled GT 1030 set up in my computer here and uh yeah let's do a benchmark on this as the kind of default base configuration before we go messing around with any settings or anything like that so our benchmark game here is going to be shadow of the tomb raider so quickly here the display settings running at 768p the low uh graphics presets obviously this is not a very fast card but you know as you can see it runs the game pretty well i let the game run for about five minutes here so this is the uh temperature that the card got up to that's the 49 degrees here on the screen 30 31 32 frames per second average is uh is pretty good and then we have our possibly cool card in the system here. The settings were the same for both, obviously. And uh, we're getting a little bit lower FPS here. You know, 30, 31 FPS. It's not drastically different. What is drastically different, though, you can see at the top, we're running at 72 degrees Celsius. And this is after letting it run for about five minutes. You know, my case has good airflow, so I don't think it would go up very much more. So yeah, similar clock speed, similar FPS, but the temperatures are uh, quite, quite different, actually. Uh, so let's try some overclocking on the actively cold card using MSI Afterburner, just a slight overclock. This is the best uh, overclock I could get uh, to keep it stable. And uh, let's let it sit for about 10 minutes. And this is the maximum temperature we got up to. It didn't go above 54 degrees Celsius. And it did make quite a difference to the frames per second, as you can see. We already got about 34 frames per second. Okay, same thing on the uh, passively cooled card. We're going to run a overclock on this. The best stable overclock I could get on it. You know, out of the gate, the same FPS, but we're going to let it run for a bit now. Yeah, so we've been running for like 10 or 15 minutes. We've almost reached 80 degrees. But it, it, it ha it's throttling a little bit now. It was at 1860 megahertz. Now it's at 1848. And... The card, it's actually, it's actually really hot. This heat sink, when I touch it, it's, it hurts my fingers. Yeah, even if the frames per second hasn't decreased, it's throttling a little bit. And I'm curious to see if it ever actually fully throttles, if I let it just keep running here. And wow, it really did. It did make a pretty big difference. Look at that. So our maximum temperature is actually 82 degrees Celsius. At the megahertz, it did need to step down. We're going down to the 1700, 1772. And the frames per second actually did take a little bit of a dip, you know, running at about 33 frames per second average instead of 34. 
Yeah, so there was actually some thermal throttling situation happening with this card. And uh, it got really, really hot. It's actually still hot. I took it out like five minutes ago and it still feels hot. When I took it right out right away, it was so hot I couldn't even touch this part. So this card it definitely throttled a little bit. It didn't make a huge difference to the FPS. But anyway, I really want to see if we could turn this into an actively cooled card using, <laughs> using a, uh, a fan. Here's my plan right here. I'm gonna stick this fan on there and it's gonna blow air through the fan into the heat sink. And we'll see if that makes any of it, any difference after an extended load on the GPU. So let's get this on there. The uh, instruments of choice are some zip ties right there and some twist ties. Let's see what we could do. <laughs> okay, okay, there's my solution there. Uh, I got a zip tie over here and a twist tie over here. It's uh, not very elegant, but it'll get the job done at least just for this test. So let's put this back of the computer and uh, we're going to put it under an extended load for like 10 or 15 minutes uh, with the overclock enabled. And we'll see if the fan makes any difference to the temperatures and if it uh, delays the thermal throttle a little bit. So let's see how that goes. Oh, okay. Well, there it is. I, I hope you can. I hope you can hear me over the fan. It's a loud fan. It's from an old CPU cooler. It's going like crazy, and I can uh, feel the air coming off it right there. So hopefully, it'll make a difference. Oh wow, oh my gosh, look at that. It's a huge difference. The frames per second is a, a tiny little bit higher, but it's not dropping down from under 50 degrees. This has been running for about five minutes now. It's 47 right now. This is amazing. Well, there you have it. Uh, it actually does make a pretty big difference uh, to have a, uh, a fan on there, at least in terms of the uh, temperature. The temperatures are actually better on this one than they were on this one. And this one didn't reach the thermal throttling threshold ever either. Even when I had them overclocked, they never reached the point where they throttled. At least this one didn't with the fan on it. Without the fan, it was uh, throttling, but it wasn't throttling that much. Just a little bit, just to bring the temperatures. I think it was around 82 degrees or something that it kind of throttled back just to keep the temperatures there. But also keep in mind that my case is a good case. It has lots of airflow and I had the side open. So, you know, on a smaller form factor case, because this, you know, this one does fit in a small form factor computer. This, uh, this would probably throttle quicker and a lot more than it does here. Anyway, it does make a difference, but it's a pretty small difference. And the trade-off of having a really big card with a fan on it versus a small card that's like whisper quiet with no fan at all. I'd probably actually choose this one, to be honest. That heatsink, it really does a good job of keeping it cool. And if you're not overclocking it, you'll never really reach that thermal throttling threshold and yeah so i don't know what i proved by doing this you know they're they're about the same you could put a fan on it to make it slightly better you don't need to really worry about any of this stuff the, the one downside of going with a uh, active cooling card is you don't get your little music area you don't get your so, you know, if music is important to you, if you plan on making music with your graphics cards, then yeah, you gotta go for the passively cooled one. The actively cooled one has no music abilities to speak of. So yeah, there's my conclusion right there. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful or at least entertaining. Please let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you have a passively cool graphics card? Or has it been working out for you? Not many passively cool cards out there on the market. I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Or a thumbs down if you didn't like it for some reason. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.
I uh, digging up my graphics card by playing with it so much, so I gotta stop that.